<laughs> All right, class. In this exercise, you will learn how to do face replacement. So first, let's uh, bring in our footage, create a conversation. Um, and uh, for face replacement, we're going to find a frame where the character is going to stay still, which is a five seconds. And then we're going to go to save this frame and save it as a PSD file. And uh, for the setting, you can just keep it as a default um, and then click on render. Then here we're going to have a PSD file of that steel frame. Um, and here we're going to use the selection tool to select the male character's face. Hit command C and then shift command V to paste at the exact same position. And then we're going to put it in a group. And on Google, you can search for demon face or demon mouth. And uh, here I found two interesting images. Um, so first I'm going to select a scar and uh, bring it into the scene, change the blending mode to multiply. So the color is going to blur into the original footage. And you'll notice that the color is different because the contrast is too much. Um, so you can just use a curve tool to boost up the dark color. And then here we can get a second uh, scar onto the character's face. As the same, we're going to use the multiply as a blending mode and then go to the curve to boost up the dark color and the middle tone color to let the contrast to match with the original color. And then we can drop in the mouth into the scene um, and change the blending mode to multiply so we can see the size of it. So once, once the size is matched, I would uh, change it back to normal and uh, get rid of the white edges. So first we have to rasterize the layer and uh, use the nasal tool to select the mouth and invert selection and then denate uh, the white area and then switch back to multiply blending mode. So now basically we have the layers we needed for the basic setup so we can select our character and create a new layer and name it as a color. And uh, we're going to pick up red color and paint on the character's face. So basically, this layer is going to use as the color base layer uh, at the bottom of the, of the scars. So change the layer type to blending mode, and then you can see the effect. And then you can also trace the scar on the character's face uh, based on the volume of the character to make the scar look more realistic. And then for the mouth layer, we're going to rename it and remove it out of the, uh, the group. And for the group, we're going to rename it as a face. The reason why we keep it separate is because later on we're going to animate the mouth. Okay. And then in the face group, we're going to create an eyeball layer and we're going to erase the, uh, the pupil, the original pupil on the footage. And then uh, outside of the face group, we're going to create a separate layer named as a pupil, and this time we're going to paint the pupil. Um, so basically, we're going to have a pupil mouth as a separate layers. Again, we're going to animate that later. So select the face group and create a mask, and uh, set pure black color to paint on the mask. So that way, you're going to mask out um, the area that outside of the character face. Okay, so this is the ending result. We're going to hide the pupil and mouth, and only show the face, and then go to export. We're going to export as a PNG image. And you can just name it face still one, and then only show the mouth and export as a PNG, name it a face still two. Do the same thing for the pupil. So all are exported as a separate layer. So now we should have these uh, three images and we're going to bring them back into After Effects. Select the face of still one, create a separate conversation. And you can go to the conversation setting, make sure the duration is long enough to cover the whole conversation. For example, our video is uh, 8 seconds, so you want to make sure that your conversation for the face has 8 seconds. And uh, uh, for, the um, for the mouth, change the blending mode to multiply and then use the puppet pin tool to draw um, puppet pins around the edge of the mouth. So we're going to use the puppet pin to animate the mouth. So once you have drawn the puppet pin, 
you will find the pins under the mesh, under the deform. So you're going to select all of the puppet pins and open them. You're going to find the first keyframe you already created, uh, which locked the original position of the mouth. So you're going to go to 10 frame and then deselect all of the pins. And then just select one of them and remove the pins one by one. And as you can see that as I move the pin one by one, you're going to automatically create the second keyframe at 10 frames. Okay, so if you play, you can see that the mouth start to move. So at the 20 frames, so we can just copy the first keyframe to 20 frames. So this is going to create this third keyframe. And because the third keyframe is the same as the first one, right? And we can put our timeline at 20 frames and copy all the previous three frames and then hit command V to paste. So the first keyframe will move to the third keyframe and then the first cycle will duplicate to the second cycle. And repeat this process, you can create uh, the cycle animation to fulfill this whole timeline. All right. And then move on to the pupil. We can animate the pupil like this, but instead of keyframe it, we're gonna just use this script I provided. So basically you can change the var max value to adjust the random value. And uh, go to the position keyframe and hold down option key and left click on the position keyframe. And then you can paste the script onto the scripting box. So now you can see that the eyeball, the pupil has been randomized. You're going to move um, by default. And again, you can lower down the var max value if you think it's too intensified. Okay, and then go back to the couple conversation and add five seconds. So here we're going to create a no object, uh, rename it as a track position. We're going to use it as for tracking. And then select the bottom footage and go to the track motion. And here we're going to find a spot that is good for tracking, which is the pupil. It has a bright color, dark color. It has a very good contrast. So you're going to move the track position to here and you're going to search the pixels inside this box. So now we can analyze the frame. You can see that it did a great job for tracking. Okay. So now we're going to add a target. We're going to transfer the tracking to the new object, which is the tra track position. And then you're going to apply transfer both X and Y position to the track low. So here's the original tracking data on the footage, and then you're going to transfer it to the position channel on the track low. Okay, and then you can drop in the uh, phase conversation and uh, bring it to five seconds. That's where we start to track, right? And then um, set the face composition as a child object as a track low so that then the face going to follow the null now you can see that the face going to stick onto the character's face okay and then you can go to a pastry channel and that the face they replace the face to fade in into the scene and this is the final result 